Hello everybody, I am Tom and you are watching my challenge run for Pokemon Gold, where I must use a completely new team for every gym. Last time we beat up Bugsy, the bug leader, and this week we're going to head to Whitney and take on a normal type gym. First up, there's a rifle battle before we can move on, and since all of my level Pokemon are now consigned to the box, I need to start with some grinding. I take out a team of Cyndaquil, Togepi, Zubat, Sentra, Metapod, and Sandshrew. A full party of six, only two of which are slated for the next gym. My plan for Whitney's gym is to go have a team of Sentret, which by that point will be a Furret, and a Metapod, by which time will be a Butterfree. And we'll go over the team close to the leader battle, but for now we did this grinding session and my Metapod evolved into a Butterfree and my Cyndaquil evolved into a Quilava. After grinding the team up to around level 10 to 16, depending, I head off and beat my rival so I can enter Elix Forest. The rifle fight really isn't too hard. Um, he leads with a Ghastly, which my Butterfree nukes with Confusion. Next up, he sends out Zubat, likewise nuked by Confusion. And finally, his Croconaw, which I put to sleep with Sleep Powder and then proceed to spam Confusion. But with Silverwood defeated, he wanders off muttering about how he hates the weak and that Team Rocket are super weak, yada yada yada. And we can head into Elix Forest. This is actually a simple little route. There is a puzzle where you have to chase a Farfetch'd back to its owner. And this lands you with the HM a cut, allowing us to proceed through the forest. I teach cut to center it because at this point in the Pokemon franchise, cut is just a straight upgrade to tackle, uh, particularly for early normal type Pokemon. It does more damage and it has higher accuracy. It's just a better tackle. We also get the TM for headbutt from this guy down here. It's not a bad move and it also has the utility that you can get some different encounters from knocking Pokemon out of trees. But for now, since I don't actually require any of these encounters, I'll save the TM for later. As we exit Elix Forest, we come out onto Route 34, where I catch myself a Drowsy, a Ditto, and an Abra. There are also six trainers here, which I use to grind my Pokemon a bit. I focus on Sentret to get him to level 15, where he evolves, and then grind him up to level 19. My limit for entering the gym is level 20, as that's what Miltank's level is. I also take the underground path in Goldenron, as there is a further 4 trainers there, and that's just some more free XP. After clearing all the trainers, I did some wild Pokemon grinding to get my Butterfree up to level 19 as well, and go take out the gym. The gym trainers really weren't too hard to take out, my ferret kind of wiped the floor with them, in reality. The combination of Cut and Quick Attack was more than enough to just take them all out. Whitney, however... Oof. I'll switch to live commentary when we actually get to the proper f fight where I defeat her. But she killed me four times before I got the win. My strategy for her was rather simple. Use female Pokemon so that she couldn't use Attract. Um, Attract makes it so that you, there's a 50% chance you won't attack the Pokemon. But it only works on the opposite gender. So as long as my Pokemon are female, because hers are, they can't use the attack. It doesn't work. So we get that we get rid of that possibility. And then we put the milk tank to sleep, confuse it, and then just power through with Fire attacking it. That was my plan on how to beat her. And that strategy does eventually work. But, in the first match, her Clefairy got a 5-hit double slap, two of which were crits on my Butterfree, taking it down to under half, which makes it impossible for me to survive any hit from Rollout or, I think, Slam from her uh, mill tank, and hence it made it impossible for my strategy to work unless I got lucky and she missed an attack. She didn't. Attempt number two was arguably worse. Her Clefairy got a, a Hypnosis off from a Metronome. It then got a Substitute off of Metronome. And it then proceeded to double slap my Furret for what felt like a thousand turns of me not waking up. Needless to say, this again was a whiteout. The third attempt I saved just before starting the fight because I didn't want to passively gain XP. Um, just from killing a first Pokemon because you kill the Clefairy, you get XP. If you go back and white out, you keep that XP. So I did a save so I could reload if I died again. This run was a bit better than the, uh, from the start, but unfortunately I didn't switch to my Butterfree before her milk take came out, so my strategy of putting it to sleep was thwarted by the fact that my Butterfree was pretty much useless. Um, once again it required her to miss, so that's one more death on the table. Match number 4 starts with her metronoming into Dragon Rage, which does a flat 40 HP, so my ferret is now less than half health immediately. Once again, since my Butterfree wasn't already out when her Miltank entered the field, it was pretty much useless unless Miltank missed an attack. Once again, she did not. Okay, now I'll switch to live commentary for the actual fight where I win. So I'm thinking... We lead with Butterfree.
If we live with Butterfree, we should be able to put this thing to sleep, theoretically. So a Jiggly- uh, Clef Jigglypuff. Clefairy isn't a problem. Perfect. Confusion should take it out relatively quickly. It doesn't have that good special defense. Perfect, and we got the crit. Cool. So, I should survive this unless they crit. And we got the sleep powder off. Fantastic. In effect. Cool. So he's confused and asleep. And I think my goal... I was tempted to switch out, but I think my goal here is to just use confusions for a while. He shouldn't snap out of confusion while he's asleep, by the way. As far as I'm aware. Should still be confused, yep. Okay, so that takes me out, that's fine. So he's still confused, and he's like half health. I should be able to take her out. Also, my Pokemon are female, so they're not getting affected by Attract. That was actually part of the plan. <laughs> Only two times. It sucks. Hit yourself. That's not good. I don't want a ramping, uh... Three hits with a crit. Okay. Hit yourself with a confusion and we'll bomb this. Nice. Fantastic! So we did it, we just needed to swap our order around a bit. Took me a couple of tries. I tried brute forcing it for a while, but I think that was a much better strategy. So being able to live one rollout works pretty well. Wow, you're mean, I shouldn't be serious, you, you child, you. And she gets all sad and cries. And refuses to give us to the badge, so then we go here, and this girl gives us the badge instead. I forgot about this, but... Oh no, you made Whitney cry. It's okay, she'll stop soon. She always cries when she loses. And then we go talk to her again, right? What do you want? Oh, badge? Oh, right, I forgot. Here's <laughs> the plane badge. Alright, so we now have the plane badge. So at this point, I can go back to, um... Unless it's your strength outside of battle, good to know. Um, so... And 45 is a rollout, right? No, Attract. Okay. Um, Attract could come in useful later, we'll see. Anyway, I'm going to go back to uh, post-commentary. And with that, Whitney is done, and the plane badge is ours. It is worth noting that you can actually get a Machop for this fight. There's a kid in the town that will trade you one for an Abra. But I think Machop, uh, sorry, Machamp is too valuable later on to waste the evolution line so early in the playthrough. So I've decided to use the, the Butterfree Furret combo for this one. If you like the video, please leave a like. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. And as always, thank you for watching, and I shall see you next time, where we'll take on the ghost gym leader Morty in Ecotique. Ecker. Ecrutique? Ecrutique City? How do you pronounce that? Ecrutique, I guess. Ecrutique? Ecrutique. Whatever.